don't usually do disclaimers for any of my videos because I just don't care to, but for this one, I feel like it's important. This video is not an attack on any of the groups that I'll be talking about today. The last thing I want to do is villainize any idol that I don't know anything about personally. If I think a group qualifies as a flop, the main problem is always going to be with the company. And my main reason for making this video is to express my desire for these groups' companies to promote them better. This video is going to contain a combination of objective and opinionated commentary, and instead of being redundant by saying in my opinion after every subjective thing that I say, I'll just announce right now that not every single single thing that I'll be saying in this video is a fact. This is my commentary, so it's coming from my perspective, and you're allowed to have a different one. So if you can't handle someone having a different perspective from your own, please just click off now. Again, I'm trying to use my commentary in the most respectful way possible, and I wish nothing but the best for every single idol I'll be mentioning today. Thanks so much for watching, and now let's get into the actual video. It's sort of hard to find a criteria that can accurately define whether or not a group flopped in 2021. And after thinking about it for a while, the main factors that I used to pick the groups that I did was their level of popularity and success in this year compared to the years past. Each group that I'll be talking about has a decent, if not healthy, level of popularity and success. But the main theme that's going to be present throughout my commentary today is decline. Whatever these groups achieved in 2021 might be seen as amazing accomplishments, or even milestones if they were done by a different group. However, if you compare them to themselves in the past years, you may realize that what they did in 2021 might be less than ideal. If you're confused now, things will probably become more clear once we get into commentary based on specific groups, and in order to not keep you all waiting anymore, let's get started by talking about the first one. It's no secret that Treasure has one of the most dedicated and largest fandoms ever next to ARMYs, but where Treasure struggles and YG has fallen short is that they've sort of alienated the group from the entire general public, especially in instances such as the Treasure web drama, spending all of the members' time on these large-scale projects that are basically only going to be seen by their fandom. Treasure have essentially alienated themselves from the large majority of K-pop stands, and if you're not a Tume, you probably don't really care about or you might not even know who Treasure are. This is something that is definitely reflected in the charts, and if you look, out of the four singles that Treasure has put out in the past two years, they have not once shown up on the Gaon 200. They actually did receive a small amount of success at the beginning of this year, with their song My Treasure showing up at number 20 on the Gaon digital download chart. However, in typical YG style, instead of following this up with another comeback, in terms of the Korean music scene, Treasure has expressed nothing but silence since January. Yes, there their album sales are good, and they have a really big fandom, but outside of it, nobody really knows who they are. And while it seems like YG is doing a pretty good job at grasping the Japanese market with Treasure, it seems like besides Japan and their own fandom, nobody really pays attention to Treasure anymore. <laughs> Despite undeniably being the money makers and the most famous group under their company, Mamamoo and their members have been severely undermarketed by RBW. Each member has established a solo career for themselves, and while they all haven't reached the same amount of success, I thought that was just due to the members' individual popularity. However, with even Hwasa, who is undeniably the face of Mamamoo's solo comeback not doing as well as her past work, I'm starting to believe that their declining popularity is 100% the fault of their company. Like. Do people even know that Mamamoo had two comebacks as a full group this year? I know both of them were marketed a little bit differently than a regular comeback would, and the members have their other activities that they might want to focus on. However, if the members wanted to deviate a little bit from regular idol activities, I feel like two off-brand comebacks was a sort of strange thing to do, and I think maybe one regular idol promoted comeback would have been a better idea. I think RBW tried to write off Mamamoo's already established popularity to pull them through 2021, and sort of gave up on giving them any actual promotions. However, if you don't remember, Aya, which was Mamamoo's last comeback before they kind of stopped doing idol promotions, made the group as a whole lose a lot of momentum because it was really poorly received by the general public. So this year, when they took a step back, instead of simply stepping out of the limelight, they seem to have sort of faded into the background. Obviously, they're still relatively well known and they are popular as a group. However, they're no longer in the limelight and it's unsure whether or not they'll be able to regain the attention that they once had. I think 
Gravity's biggest struggle is that they're about to enter their third year of activity and people still only know about one, maybe two of the members. Hyungjun is busy going on basically every single variety show in existence and the rest of the members are just stuck in the dungeon from what it seems. Both of their comebacks this year too were extremely divisive and while they did get a lot of attention, it wasn't very positive. With my turn specifically being many people's least favorite comeback of the entire year, while a lot of people who aren't in their fandom do talk about Gravity, when it comes to their music, it's almost always in a negative light and I can't help but think this might be hurting their reputation. I personally don't really mind either of their title tracks this year and I actually do like Gas Pedal. Sadly though, neither of these songs were able to get Gravity a music show win versus their first year when they were able to secure one. Coming from the same company as Monsta X and Sistar, Gravity had all of the resources to be one of the top 4th gen boy groups. Sadly though, it seems like they're sort of stagnating in popularity and it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better for them soon. It really is a sad instance of poor timing, how when Card had a peak in their popularity with the release of Gunshot, one of their four members had to enlist in the military before they were able to have another release. Coupled with DSP Media having a notoriously bad reputation for promoting their artists, 2021 has been a very rough year for Card. While BM used his popularity to try and start a solo career with singles such as Broken Me, Body Movin', and 13 IVI, it seems like people only pay attention to him when it comes to the memes, because there was not much support for his music. Another pretty big factor is how Card's main popularity comes from South America, but with the restrictions from going to other countries and especially other continents to promote, due to the three active members having little to no popularity in Korea, they haven't been able to do much. Card is a group that heavily relied on touring to fund their comebacks, and now that they can't do that, they haven't been able to do anything. One thing that I did see them involved with was a collaboration with the video game Dead by Daylight, but as I looked into that, it didn't really seem like it amounted to anything. They released a special dance practice for Halloween, and if they did anything in the game, I wasn't aware of it. So instead of being able to stabilize their fandom and keep active with solo activities, they've just sort of fallen off the face of the earth, and it's really sad to see. These two seem pretty self-explanatory, but I thought I would talk about it anyways. Controversies aside, both of these groups have been losing members left and right, and neither of their companies seem to want to take that final leap and just officially disband them. Both groups have members who are engrossed in their solo activities such as CLC's Yujin on Girls Planet and AOA's Solhyun with their acting gigs, and even though the members of both groups are pretty vocal and transparent about how they're not going to have a comeback in the near future, the companies of these groups continue to tease their fans with empty promises that'll never come to fruition. As someone who's a fan of both of these groups' music, it's really disheartening to see how they're sort of just trapped in their contracts. However, most of the people who are a part of these groups' fandoms have accepted the fact that they're unofficially disbanded, and for the most part, they've moved on. And that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed. I tried my best to be as uncontroversial as possible with everything that I said, but I know I'm gonna offend some people with like my thumbnail and the video title. Oh well. Let me know what groups you think flopped in 2021 in the comment section below, of course, while keeping it civil. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more from me, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing. Thank you again so much for watching, and see you next time.